of this lounge, same hotel that I did the demo earlier. If I look at this image of this lounge, my biggest concern is this image is very blurry, right? Do you guys see that? You have various ways to sharpen it. If the entire image is blurry, one way to go is go into filter sharpen. And you can, you know, and sharp mask is what I use the most, but any of those would work. And now let's actually sharpen it a little bit. See what happens if I go into this and kind of sharpen the image, you know. And you can see here what you're doing. Do you guys see the difference when I move it? And I can play with the various settings to kind of sharpen the image less or more. It doesn't seem to do that great of a job, does it? Do you guys see that? I'm going to do Apple Z, and you'll see that it's not doing that great of a job. Piece of me, though, also thinks that I might want to unlock this. In fact, let's start over by revert and unlock first. Sometimes the problem with that when the layer is locked, it's really hard to do anything to that layer. That is, um, I'm going to go in the Unsharp Mask again. That is, by the way, right here. It's the last uh, filter is right at the first line in the filter menu. It didn't really do very much. It's not working that well. So what I suggest we look into is these options. You have the, sorry, right here. You have a sharpen tool right here. So the difference between this sharpen tool versus the, what I just showed you is if you go under filter, it will apply to the entire image. But what this image has the biggest problem is on these couches is really blurry. But right here is actually not too bad at all. So I'm going to go under the sharpen tool, make it, bigger with the square bracket and go in and sharpen that area in particular and do you guys see that it's getting a lot better do you guys see that if i go in here and just go in and sharpen just where i need to this one also needs to be sharpened a bit Good question, Rachel. I'm glad you pointed out. I was going to tell you that, and we should demo it, though. If the opacity is 100%, it sharpens too much. Just like what we did earlier when we were doing, uh, it just blows it. Let me actually, good point, revert and go here. Sorry, when I go in the sharpen tool right here, go and say that I want the strength to be at 100. So if I go and I do that, I mean, it really does it. But it's not now blending in with my photo that well. It means if you go in in a certain area only and blow the heck out of it in terms of sharpening it, then it starts, you know, actually being an eyesore. It means right now, if you look at what I did to this image, and unfortunately the projector doesn't give it a lot of justice, but do you see that it's too much sharpened? It's not working out, actually. So remember that all these tools that we're using it, most of the time, we actually do use them at 40 to 50%. So I'm going to actually revert again and redo it with the, the setting that I wanted to do that was there, fortunately, originally. That is at about 50%, I think, would be correct. So thanks, Rachel, for bringing, you know, pointing that out. I was actually going to tell you, but it's always better to show it. I was going to tell you that I was sharpening at 50%, that is what I want, but it's nice to show you how if you sharpen at 100%, the strength of the tool messes things up, actually. It's too strong. So these tools that I'm, I'm right underneath here, not just the sharpen, but obviously the blur tool and the smudge tool, they all act on individual parts of your image. Versus if you go under filter blur or filter sharpen, it will do it to the entirety of your image. So just keep that in mind, that if you have like a, this rug that needs to be sharpened, for example, but the rest of the image doesn't, just go in there and act on the rug and keep kind of going over the same rug until when it's sharp as you need it to be. So it really act on individual areas of your image. Um, let me actually move to a different tool.